Welcome to the Real Tech Talk podcast, where I, your host, E Breezy, E Bizzle, E K One Love, otherwise known as Eric Brody. I'm going to bring you on a journey, and that journey is going to be simple, easy, and to the point. I'm raising $2 million. Actually, I've raised $2 million, and we're keeping going. What we're going to do is we're going to identify technologists out there who are changing the game as to the way I build, develop, manage, and the way people live in the assets that I'm in. Now, if that technology is somehow helping, I'm investing. I'm going to put my money where my big mouth is because, look, I'm the son of a prominent New York City architect. I'm the product of a public school system. Suits and Timbos has always been the way I've rolled. I'll tell you another thing. I used to get pulled over by the cops on my motorcycle. I'd be wearing a suit and I'd have my Timbos on. Didn't help me, by the way. Still got 11 points in three months. But here's my point. If you're changing the way I build and develop, then I want in. And I'm going to tell you why. There's two reasons. There's an essential truth that's changing the way that the world is working. Two things. Number one. We are building slower today than we did 50 years ago. Can you believe that? We are building slower. The second thing is technology moves like the Nike swoosh. Not that I'm promoting Nike, but it moves like the Nike swoosh. It's moving so fast that we can't even contemplate what it is, what it's doing, and if it really changes how we operate. Well, I'm at the forefront of that. And I'm going to bring in the technologists. I'm going to bring in the prop tech owners and the entrepreneurs to see if what they're doing is real and if it's a medicine or a vitamin. And if it's real, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Now, finally, why you? Why should you pay attention? Because every day you live in an asset and that technology is changing. So if this podcast is for you, if you're living, you're building, and you're breathing in any multifamily anywhere in the world. So come on board, have some fun, sit down, and let's see if these people got anything to say that's relevant. And if it is, let's invest. Let's go. That's why we're here, bro. This is real tech talk. Boom, lot. So who the hell are you, bro? You know, what are you into? What do you do? Yo, you can keep it real here. Tell me. Tell me about these real estate players. Eric Brody is the managing principal of CEMVC LLC. All opinions expressed by Eric and podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of CEMVC LLC. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment decisions. Clients of CEMVC LLC may maintain positions in the securities discussed in this podcast. How are we doing, player? Did you check his mic? Can I get a little bit more? Yeah. You can. How does it sound? Sounds pretty good. No, you got to talk Just right in. It's like a boom mic. Yeah. Give him a I'm rap. on it. Tell him like your rap, like your old school hip hop. Hip diddy hop diddy hip hip hop pop pop. <laughs> Right, Brooklyn that, in the house. That's enough. Please stop. Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing. All right. You sound great. <laughs> Thank you. Hard. Today, I've got my very special guest, the latest technologist who's coming on to find out if the technology he's providing is real or fake, a medicine or a vitamin. I'd like you to introduce yourself sure. and tell everyone here, our listeners, our wonderful many, many listeners, why you? What motivates you, Kill? Wow. All right. So we're jumping right in. Yeah. So uh, MarketProof is a real estate data and analytics platform. Uh, we focus primarily on condos these days. Before MarketProof, uh, most of the platforms kind of mixed different asset types together. And we think of real estate as different asset types. You get rentals, you get sales, you get resales. And so to kind of focus- Wait, to understand, it's strictly New York. Yeah, well, right now it's strictly New York. Later, we'll okay. get to some other places, but right now we're, we're only in New York City. So analytics, NYC. Analytics, NYC, specifically around new development in condos. Um, and why that, why that class? Well, first of all, there's a lot of condos in New York. They're expensive. What is a condo, if you don't mind? Sure. Condo is a... Now, to my audience, I don't want you to think I don't know. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I want yeah. you to know. Eric knows. Yo, so Eric, I just want you to and, tell them, okay? rewind me, right? <laughs> rewind me back to whatever level I need to be at because you know I'm living and breathing this stuff. That's right. So a condo um, is a, basically a deeded property. Um, typically in New York, condos are going to be in a medium to large size building. It's got to be, you know, 10 to hundreds of units. The biggest condos in New York have uh, more than 800 units in them. And so, so you own the real property. So yeah, it's like you, a house. It's it, just, it's vertical. 
it's it's many houses mushed together into one building that have c- common shared elements. So there's got to be a lobby, there's got to be stairways, there's got to be amenities, maybe a gym, a pool, whatever, elevators. And do you live in one? I do. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I do. This is the real world yeah, experience for you. Sure. And I'm even the president of my condo board, <laughs> so I'm really in there. Yeah. I've got I've got visions of you know older people who have nothing to do. You sound like a busy man, and you're running the condo board. You know. Well, it's a great way for me to learn. Um, you know, it's really feet on the ground, uh, dealing with the issues that we face all the time. We got labor issues, right? You have ownership issues. Of how course. much is this thing worth? How do we buy it? How do we sell it? How do we rent it? All right, so let's go back. Tell me in one sentence, so market proof. What are you trying to provide? What's the solution? What are you doing? Yeah, so we are a B two B business to business software platform, uh, and our customers fall into three groups. We have the people who build buildings, so that would be developers, architects, and even the lawyers and others that that work with them. Then we have the kind of financial intermediaries. Those are the people that help build buildings. So those are lenders, those are investors. And then the third group is people who help buy and sell buildings. So those are commercial brokers and residential brokers. Okay, so that's your customer base. And what are you providing them? So we're providing them the uh, information about all the units in New York City, the inventory of, of condos and uh, what's happening to them, how many are there, what are the prices, what are the all the aspects related to uh, what's happening in the market? So you're providing them information at their fingertips, basically. Thank you for spoon feeding it to me. Yeah. We... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. the customers, you got a great customer base, and you're giving them information, basically. Yeah, it's 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 information, but it's also analysis. Uh, there's tons of information out there, but being able to kind of synthesize it into something really usable is really the key. And who does that? Uh, the software does a lot of that work. Um, so oh, we cool. create various algorithms and things that make it easy to uh, get that information. How fast are things selling? Which buildings are selling the fastest? Which is which are selling for the most money? And why is that important for those people? Like, so give me an example of of something that you're providing, and then who that customer base, which you stated, sure. and how that's a powerful tool for them. Yeah. So if you're a developer, you and you're selling a building. By the way, I am a developer, so this is yes, this let's is great. Do it. You well, know? That's <laughs> why. Let, let's let's go back and forth here, right? Let's say you haven't built a building yet, right? So what are the other buildings that you are competing with? What are the buildings that have come before you? How did they do? What prices did they sell at? Uh, let's say now you're selling that building. What uh, and the sales are going well or not going well? Well, why? Uh, who else is selling? At what prices are they selling? These things tend to break break down into kind of price per foot. So, at what price per foot are you trying to sell? What price per foot is somebody else uh, trying to sell at? Uh, why are your sales going well or theirs going well? We give all that information so that it's right there in front of you every day, updated up to you know ten minutes ago. What's happening? So pre-market proof. If you needed that information, what were you doing? Yeah, a lot of it is out there, uh, incomplete. You're going to a variety of different sites. You're going to uh, sites that are public sites that the city provides. You're going to different brokerages. Uh, you're relying on your broker to synthesize and send you reports. Um, and you you were able to pull a lot of it together, but you didn't have it right there for you all the time, up to date in one. Place. And your own opinion, right? Like if what you're stating, what you're stating was the premise, and I agree with you 100. percent I would go to my broker and I'd get data from them. Yeah. But it's never like you had your own data within which to communicate that to a broker, Feed right? Feed it to me again, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so we are viewed as an independent third-party source of data. We don't have a horse in the race. Um, so uh, we're not out there selling the product. So the information you get from us, you know, is unbiased. If it's unbiased, then you're allowed to, you know, make your own opinion. on. But you're saying you're going to give insights. So I'm always finding that one of my biggest problems when I'm dealing with technology in general, and I even had this story where the, these these guys were giving me, they said, oh, we use all the biggest people out there in the world. And I'm like, great, give me one analytic data point of what you've learned. And they had nothing. Right. So is a part of the software you're going to be giving information that people can understand? And how are you doing it? Yeah. So, well, yes, for sure. Um, they can use the website to 
review the information, they can download the information. Uh, and then with some of our customers, probably you know some of the bigger customers, uh, we're also providing analysis for them. So uh, we're helping to uh, understand the information, shape the information, uh, and deliver it in a way that uh, maybe they don't have the internal resources to be able to, to do. So wait, if I know you well enough, will you be my oracle and you'll tell me where to invest those dollars? Will we get access to you, the oracle? <laughs> Uh, that comes up, you know. Um, we uh, we don't give investment advice, uh, but we could certainly, you know, point in one direction or away from another. I'll give you a great example that just came up. Love to hear it. Um, we have a client that uh, provides what's called condo inventory loans. Uh, condo well, inventory. Explain loan. that. Yeah, well, explain know, that to I the just, audience. I just, you know? I just went in like all the way. <laughs> but it's a, it's a fairly you know basic concept. It's like refinancing the mortgage in your house. Uh, so you have your initial mortgage, you want to uh, change the time period in which you got to pay it back, right? Maybe you got to get a different interest rate. A condo inventory loan is the same thing for big condo buildings. So can I put that in perspective for the audience? Sure. When we develop condos and we underwrite, which is determining you know, what the return on the cash will be, I'm going to tell you right now, we never say that we're going to have to refinance because we didn't sell, right? The premise is that you sell. So the idea of a condo inventory loan, which is a product out there, sucks for us as developers. That means it didn't it, sell it under the paradigm chewing, and the time that we yes, stated. It's chewing into your profits. But COVID you know, delayed everything, which meant that a lot of developers had to refinance to get more time. So, okay, so to go back to your example, you were yeah. with the bank or you were with the so developer? We are with, a, the, our customer uh, is, a, is a, they're not a bank, but they are a lender. Okay. Right? So, so someone who dived, who would offer they that pro product. They can privately lend tens or hundreds of millions of dollars to developers to refinance their loans. Um, so, we, you know, we were, we were engaged to do a little uh, analysis for them. Um, and we're, we have kind of the up-to-date information. Plus, we have various insights into, you know, what's happening with that project, just like, you know, most of the others. Um, and so the question is, you know, why are things going slowly? Um, and we were- Why are, are, are units selling slowly there that, that they needed building. a condo inventory loan? And that's the bank or the lender asking you. Yes. But what was the developer saying? Developers just looking to refinance. Okay, so. right? They just need <laughs> they just need more time. Okay, so they're looking for time, and then that bank you're saying is oh, a bank lender. A part of their process is this due diligence as to should we underwrite this or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were able to help them with information, but also a little bit of context uh, with that project, with uh, projects, other projects from that developer, from that architect. Um, the location of that project. Well, what information? How did they, so you, what information did they actually get? Um, how the projects from that develop, other projects from that developer are performing. Um, Even if they weren't in the same neighborhood, they wanted right, to know wherever about. Wherever they were. Mm -hmm. uh, and just, it, it helped to give a little more context about the mindset. And what did you find? Um, Let's not talk about that right here. But what I can say is- Listen, we, we could say it was yeah. on the moon. We could say whatever this yeah, example is we, really on uh, the moon. What I can say <laughs> is that it that project is probably better positioned as rentals rather than getting a refinancing. It might have been going slowly because the project might not have been correctly analyzed in the first place. And well, it probably should have been rentals from the get-go. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, you know, you were guessing at the time, I assume, you know, because what you're stating is pre this product, you were getting Everything, incomplete data. Things have changed a lot in this, you know, in this time period. And whatever analysis was done at that time, right, there's a lot of guesswork going on. Um, switching over to rentals is not necessarily a bad thing, but it is not what they set out to do. So I have, this leads me to three different questions. Sure. So when was market proof formed? Yeah. Right. And then um, what is the model? Because I've I've heard you talk about now two different income streams. It seems, and then you know now that technology has sort of changed as a result of the coronavirus. I'd love to hear how that impacted. Depending on when you started. So when did you start? There was an article in the New York Times, fall 2019. Uh, one in four condos in Manhattan unsold. Um, and the article really just st struck me um, because 
I really had a sense that the information was incomplete. The sources of the data were really good. Um, but I also just recognized that condos were kind of mixed in with resales in terms of how they were being viewed and what the data was. And so this is where Corona comes in. Uh, during that time period, we had lots of time to put our heads down and gather up all the different sources that we needed uh, in order to isolate uh, condos as a separate asset class. So during uh, 2020, we uh, really put our heads down and we gathered up offering plans, which is where condo information is disclosed uh, from developers. And to, that's a public? To the public. Mm -hmm. um, no, I'm saying an offering plan right, is, a public, is a public facing document. It is, though they can be very hard to get. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a separate topic we could go into. Um, and but also lots of other documents. Wait, wait, wait. So you got what do you have? Spies on the street? Well, this is an important topic here. Are we it got, is, how, it how is. are we getting that data? You know, yeah. is this Wall Street here? Well, you can get them. Uh, you know, again, around twenty five percent of them are actually published publicly, um, and increasing. You know, I don't want to you know say anything bad about the. New York State Attorney General's office. Which are great, great people. Yeah, great job. <laughs> they're, they're doing their best. They're doing their best under with difficult circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, and they've been doing better, actually. So the numbers are up a bit. Uh, but they, they're out there. Lawyers have them. Brokers have them. Developers have them. Title companies have them. But I'm saying, so you read this article. You're saying there's incomplete information, but that's but, not a company. But also mixed. It's mm -hmm. also mixed with the resale information. So we uh, put so then our- how do you go about, yeah, like- Well, there's also other kinds of documents that also have a lot of this information. Listings have the information. There's other filings, uh, something called a condo declaration, and also from tax documents. So we wrote a whole bunch of software that kind of brought all this stuff together. Um, and then we started kind of experimenting with different customers. And our first customer was a, a big hedge fund. Uh, at the and what did they want to know? At the beginning of uh, the, when we started to come out of the pandemic, uh, kind of big capital sources, your phone's ringing. Uh, big no, it's not. <laughs> it's in a different room. What are you talking about? <laughs> big capital well. sources thought that there would be a lot of condos for sale in bulk. Um, they, you know, oh, so that was a Corona impact right, right there. People thought that that was what was going to happen. It didn't happen. Um, and we can get to that in a second, but, uh, so that was our, really our first customer. Like, oh, you know, we really got something here. Oh, so that's when you realize someone was willing to pay for the data. <laughs> yes. And so our model to get to your other question is we sell subscriptions to our software. Isn't that called a SaaS? Yes, it is. Wow, a you got to tell the audience subscription spoon, as a service, you know? Spoon feed number three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a SaaS model. Uh, we have different tiers uh, from kind of a very low price tier, maybe for an individual agent or a consumer. Uh, and it scales up uh, to enterprise customers, which then also include some of the stuff that I've been talking about with analysis and more kind of hands on human. Uh, review and you know interpret interpreting of the data. Listen, we're looking for the best and the brightest. We're looking for three categories of people, companies, and corporations out there. Number one, do you want to sponsor me? I'll take a sponsor. I'll put you up. Let's go. Number two, are you an investor? Are you looking for the opportunity to get into a business that's expanding tremendously? Three hundred twenty-five million in Metaprop, hundred million in Tishman Spire, twenty-one billion in twenty twenty-one. Do you have access? Well, I do. And number three, do you have a technology? Are you a CEO promoting it? Then I want to have you on this podcast. Let's come down here and let's find out in NYC because that's where we are. If what you're providing is a medicine or a vitamin. So tell me, as a business, so you realize in 2020 that, oh, okay, this thing has some wings, right? You get this customer, even though it turns out that premise wasn't true. Then what? How is it going? Yeah. So then um, what happened next uh, is condos started to sell. All right. So New York started to turn back on, uh, despite you know what was being talked about in the media, uh, New York started to really light up. Um, and the kind of the dip in sales was really temporary. It only lasted for a couple of months. And so uh, going back to this condo inventory uh, issue, many of the developers started to refinance. And so then that kind of became our next customer set, which is the intermediaries um, that help developers refinance. Um, but also since then, 
the market was really lighting up, uh, then we started to see a third customer set, which was brokers. So brokers help uh, developers sell the units, other brokers help uh, people buy the units. And so that kind of became our, our third customer set. That's so interesting. It's not as if it was the original premise as to the, who these customers would be. It really came from an idea, and then you sort of allowed the market to come to you. We did, and so um, you know, when you're in the data business, uh, first you gotta kind of create this pool. Um, it kind of goes against, you know, in software, there's you know been this concept of kind of you know lightweight startups. What a does data that mean? company is a, not a lightweight startup. It means uh, you put something out there, uh, you see how people react, you don't invest a lot initially, and then as you see what people are doing and what they want, then you you build as you go. Mm -hmm. We did. We had to invest uh, in the data pool, uh, but we did follow the follow your customer approach, and so the market was moving very quickly, uh, as I described, from kind of you know big investors to refinancings to brokers, and over a span of just a few months, those three customer groups emerged. It's wild, but you know, there's something that I always like to tell my audience that's super relevant to whether we invest or not within those companies. And that is, <laughs> don't worry about that, guys. We'll get that in post. We always want to know, which uh, is something just about you. So how did you get into the technology business that you know you know what, uh, what, what these terms are? Because I don't. I'm a Neanderthal in the development and construction world. Uh, I've been in a software business for a while. Uh, I had a previous company uh, called Blank Slate, and we owned a bunch of media properties. Uh, one of them was a uh, blog, which turned into kind of a little local niche media company called Brownstoner. Can uh, I tell you a quick story about Brownstoner? Sure. So Brownstoner has been around for a while. Yeah. It was like the first you know, online blog for real estate development. And Brownstoner's first comment about me was, Van, which was my father as an architect. Yeah. Van uh -oh, equals architect. Eric equals developer. Van plus Eric equals shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was my first Brownstoner comment. Well, look, back in the early days of blogs, people were really snarky. Yeah. Um, and um, it got a little messy. Uh, messy in a way that in 2022 would not be okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but back then it was okay. And there was a <laughs> lot, of, lot of unique voices that were on Brownstoner. Uh, some of them became famous unto themselves. This, this predates, uh, you know, the whole idea of influencers. Mm -hmm. But they were they were influencers in this little community, um, and so we uh, I acquired Brownstoner from the original founder, mm -hmm. uh, and we kind of built it from a blog into a media company. Uh, we started adding a bunch of software to it. Um, we added real estate listings to it. Um, we added. Uh, what at the time was a business directory, mm -hmm. a place for uh, kind of service providers. In what was it estate. called? It was called the Brown Center. Oh, the Brown Center. Yeah, the okay. Brown Center directory. You made a marketplace almost. We made a, a little marketplace. Yeah, it was you know for architects and plumbers and electricians and all those guys to promote themselves to our audience. Very cool. So and I sold all that oh. uh, to a kind of regional media company uh, that then has expanded it quite a lot. And that, and you took that capital to start MarketProof. Yeah, we kept a little piece of software mm -hmm. from that. Uh, that little piece of software uh, handles data aggregation, bringing data together from different places mm -hmm. that we'd created uh, in our listing system. Uh, so yeah, we took that capital, we took that little piece of software, and then we used that to start MarketProof. So you're not funded by venture capitalists; it's more your own money. Uh, the initial capital was mine, um, and then so wait, a principal puts his money where his mouth is. You know, I was yeah, like that. Yeah, sure. We had we had money, um, and my partner who who handles all the tech side, uh, Ning, mm -hmm. uh, he and I uh, took what we had and started this new company. He handles all the tech side. I handle the business side, uh, and our lead developer Adam also came with us. All of our other employees went with Brownstoner to the new owner. So you just took the cream of the crop. Yeah, the three of us stuck together. Uh, we've been working together now for, I don't know, maybe 10 years. Uh, and then once we had kind of a proof of concept, we started bringing in outside investors. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, our strategy with investors is what I call a barroom strategy. Um, who you'd like to be sitting at a bar with? Who I'd like to be sitting at a bar with. Uh, kind of people who are in the business, uh, who are not just capital. They have knowledge. They can bring other people to the bar. Um, they bring experience. Um, you know, we've had to learn a lot as we've gone. Uh, and those investors uh, bring a lot of knowledge and have introduced us to a lot of people. They've acted as our sales team in a way. It's cool. So um, you didn't even have to really sell to get the word out. Um, not much. I assume formally now to scale, everything gets more formal, but at the time. You know, we our strategy has been organic growth. Uh, we haven't gone and tried to raise a lot of money and had this big hockey stick. Uh, this is a niche business. Mm -hmm. um, and our strategy has been to become, uh, generate awareness inside of this niche. So, so far it hasn't required a lot of capital. Yes, we've raised a few million dollars over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, and what's its future then? Well, as we start to expand other markets. So uh, to do, because they have condos or at least they need this information elsewhere. Yeah, so following uh, what our customers ask for, uh, our customers are asking us to be in other markets. Mm. Um, and it only takes a few markets to have a majority of the condos in the United States. So we need to be in Florida, we need to be in Texas, we need to be in California. Uh, we enter those markets and we have more than 40% of the condos in the United States. And is that the, is that the move? That's the plan. Um, now, that being said, one of the other things that our customers are asking us to do is address different asset types. Mm -hmm. So we have a new product coming out uh, next quarter. Please called, plug away. Yeah, called Market Proof uh, Pipeline. Uh, and what Market Proof Pipeline covers is um, what is being built across all the asset classes. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, if you are, uh, investing in or developing or selling, you're also dealing with rental properties, mm -hmm. uh, and you're probably also dealing with commercial properties. Um, and so what market proof pipeline does is it tracks everything that's being developed from land acquisition through the initial permits, all the way through the process of, of building a building up to the point where you start selling it. Um, and so Pipeline gives people a really early look at what's happening. Um, right now we're working on um, a piece about Gowanus in Brooklyn. So Gowanus was rezoned. Uh, it's, I forget how many blocks, a lot with, maybe you know. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I don't. I mean, I, I grew up right by there, but I don't know. With hundreds of parcels. Mm -hmm. Many of them are vacant land. Maybe they just have a parking lot on them. So we've done a deep dive of every single parcel in that area and all that is covered uh, in Market Proof Pipeline. Some of those might end up being condos, which will find their way into it's Market cool. Proof New Development. Cool. But Yeah, you know, look, the, the point of this podcast is, you know, as a builder developer, and I had raised capital to invest into different uh, technologies. And I said to myself, I only want to invest in technologies that help the way I build, develop, and then the way people live in those assets. And you know, I, I've taken a deep dive into what Market Proof is providing. And I built during coronavirus, and I had trouble moving condominiums uh, sales. And I said to myself, I don't ever want to fall into that again. And I found that, you know, if I was speaking with the brokers and again, I don't want to promote any of them, they didn't have, they had incomplete data. So in my opinion, not only if I can get the data from a single source of truth that is telling me at least, look, I don't think it's ever perfect, but a large portion of it. And then there's some analytic value being provided. I mean, that's a very, very powerful tool. And I can't imagine that there wouldn't be a developer, a bank, a broker that doesn't need some kind of insight into it. I almost think it would be arrogant of them if this isn't their day job to think that they have all of the data. So it's a really powerful tool. And if it was up to me to decide it, and it is up to me to either put money or not, whether yeah. you're a medicine or a vitamin, you know, I wonder what my audience thinks, but I know what I think. And I would 100% put 
put the money where my mouth is. If what you're providing is even 20% of what you said on this it's podcast, 100%. I'm giving you the Thank money. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Well, no, I need the paperwork. We got to see if it. it's true, let's but I would give him the money. There it is. Give him the money, people. <laughs> All right, guys. So, you know, you know my opinion on it. I think we go hard on this, but before we go... I need you to plug everything oh, and your, it. you know, every, give it to me, spell it out. Yes. Tell us where to find you. Yeah. So marketproof.com is where you can find the website. Uh, we're on Twitter and on Instagram at marketproof NYC. Twitter, Insta. What about TikTok? You TikToking yet? Uh, you know, we have it. We haven't done anything with it yet. Oh, um, you do have it. Look yeah, at you, sure. you we have, we young have, millennial. We have all the platforms covered. Well, listen, Kale, it's been an absolute pleasure. And um, I hope Thank to you, see Eric. you out there and we'll be in touch. All right. Talk to you soon. You Thanks. got it, brother. Bye. All right.